Hey, it's Joe Ferro Geek Toolkit, and this is another video about the, we're, it's basically a follow-up to the LaserBox D1 video. Uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about how to build that Star Wars clock that I showed in that video. Now this will work for almost any laser cutter because most of the content here is not gonna be super technical. Let me show you what the clock looks like finished. This is what we're gonna build today. Now I've seen a lot of these on Etsy and we're gonna talk about that. We'll talk about the, the inspiration of where these came from. And then there's gonna be a bit of talk about like the sales of these clocks, how they're made, um, the patterns, where to get them, because I think that's really the interesting thing about this project is understanding where do you get these files from and what are you getting into when you get the files? Like when you pay for them in Etsy, what, do you, what does it look like when you get them? I'll tell you about uh, the source I used and show you what those files looked like and why it's an absolute mess. Uh, but then we're gonna switch over to like tips on how to laser them. I'll show you how to set up laser box, which is what the D1 uh, used for Xtool. And then we'll talk a little bit about like safety and stuff for that. We'll switch over to electronics. I'm gonna tell you how to get the, make the clock mechanism for that and show you where to get that stuff as well. So there's a lot coming here in this video. It's gonna be mostly information. Now there's not a lot of technical stuff to know about this. It's kind of one of those things where you learn where the sources are. So we'll get into all that. First, let's talk about the inspiration. So let me show you this uh, here is the uh, one of the first things I saw when I was looking at clocks one day that really caught my attention. And what it was is this is a a record that has been cut. The first thing I want to say is do not do this. And, and the reason being is this is PVC. That's what records are made out of. If you laser a record, the, uh, the reaction that happens, the chemical reaction of heating it uh, creates basically hydrochloric gas, I believe it is. Let's see here, let's, let's go to our thing. Can I cut vinyl PVC with laser? No, not ever. Um, this is a picture of an epilogue. Let me see if I can get you a bigger, yeah, this is an epilogue. And so the thing about the gas is not only is it poisonous to you, but it's corrosive. So this is from lasergods.com. They're basically explaining why you should never do this. And wow, that was a $30,000 laser they're saying. Um, the, the thing is the way these are made is typically with a CNC machine. So when you see these style, that is a CNC'd or uh, some people use a hot knife to do it. I don't fully understand that because to me, you know, if you're applying heat to it, I would expect the gas to still off gas, but I've heard that's, you know, I've seen a lot of tutorials, that's how those are made, um, either by hand or with CNC machines. Okay, so knowing that that's not how to do this, how do we get a clock that looks kind of like this? So we'll go, oh, here's another cool one, Walking Dead. Now the, the reason I, I have this picture queued up is I wanted to show you the style of the clock on the inside. Uh, I'll mention that later when I talk about things I wish I had done better. Um, but here we go. So here's a bunch of things on Etsy. This is the next thing I found is that there's a bunch of clocks on Etsy. And a couple of them have this style here where they're actually, um, let's see, is this one? This one's a record one also. Very cool design. Uh, here we go. So you get these here. These are uh, acrylic clocks. Now, the thing is here, you can get an acrylic that you can cut with a laser it's still black, it will look very much like the record lasers, or I'm sorry, the record clocks, but it's not, it's, you know, it's, it's acrylic, it's safe though. And you can do it with a laser, which is a lot less expensive than a giant CNC machine. So this clock on the lower right uh, here is gonna look familiar, that's uh, the pattern I use, that's, this isn't where I got it from, but I wanted to show that there are tons of patterns up on Etsy that you can get and download. The reason it's a mess is I don't know who owns what patterns as far as who made the original stuff. I do know that none of this stuff is owned or licensed, but Etsy's like a wild, wild west now. I wanted to make a clock for my own personal use, and so I was willing to go ahead and get some patterns. So let's see here. Uh, here's that one that's another acrylic one. There's a lot of gaming ones. There's, there's basically tons of them. And when you're scrolling through this wild, wild west here, you're gonna see tons of patterns. The one I ended up going with is this one right here, 370 of them. Uh, it was $40, I decided to take a plunge because that was about what the clocks were selling for anyway. And I was excited for the project and I wanted to have a wide variety of things to choose from. Most of these are garbage, most of these I would never make. 
Um, but there are there were some good ones in there, including the one the Star Wars one I did go with here. Here's some more options of these. You know, uh, this is a music collection. I just want to show that there's lots of like whatever you're into. There is probably a clock thing out there. And by looking at these, you can get inspired and understand how they're putting them together so that you could make your own in the future, which I think is really cool. This one I wanted to show, this is really cool because if you did want to sell clocks, this is a very generic, it gets rid of the licensing issues and you can use the same techniques I'm going to talk about in this video to cut acrylic in this style and have a clock that you could actually make and sell at like a fair or uh, online or something. All right, so this is what it looks like. What 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 is the next stage? You 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 find a clock that you want to buy. Uh, let's say you buy the patterns. You get a mail like this from Etsy, and it's basically like, here's your download. This is so sketch. There's a download that downloads a PDF file. The PDF file uh, will look something like this, and then it will link to a Google Drive that will have a download of a raw file, and I'll show you that in a second. The reason they're doing this is this PDF file um, allows them to put their name at the top to make it look like it's their file. I really suspect a lot of these shops, I don't know about digital CNC, but a lot of these shops I think are just pirating each other's files at this point and uh, all linking to the same Google Drive where this stuff's coming from. It's a mess. That being said, I'm just telling you what you're getting into. You get a PDF, it has a link, you go to that link, you get a download, you extract it. And then I'm going to show you what this, uh, let's see what this looks like here. This is what the extracted thing, there's 370 clocks. They, uh, they, they just did a flat file layout. They didn't even try. And, um, it's kind of cool in that they have all the different formats. They have Adobe Illustrator. Um, they have a DWG, which is, you know, is a, um, a, uh, vector based file. Then they'll typically have a JPEG. So, you know, stuff like that. So, the thing is, let's see, if I load up uh, this SVG, uh, no, okay, here we go, one underscore JPEG. This is a trick. If you do do this and you want to see all the things really quickly, just do an, a, a search here for like underscore dot JPEG. And what will happen is you'll end up with just the clocks and then you can very quickly just go through and see what the... Um, what these clocks look like or you can double click on them and go through just these files and that's one way to go through this 370 clocks to find the one that you want to make when you do find it this number is the key of what you want to use all right so now you've got your file and you want to uh basically make this this thing what does it look like i'm going to show it to you in laserbox basic uh, which is this software here. This is for the D1 Mini. I'll probably do another clock later when, I, when I'll when i talk about like what, what I want to do better with my clock. And when I go to make that clock, I'll make another video if this one does well, and I'll talk about that. Uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to take that. The first clock was this like one from Paris. So let's go to that clock, and I'll bring in the SVG here. You're going to get a loading project. It's going to say, do you want to scale it? I'm going to say no. Um, and so I should have, oh, did I not get it? Let's see here. I'm going to drag it back in one SVG. Sorry. Say yes. Okay. You do want to scale it and you're going to get something like this here. Now the, the thing that's really important is to look at the width and height. You need to match this to what your material is. Now, uh, let's see for this right here. We have, I'm going to use uh, a quick calculator to calculate this out 396 millimeters i am working in standard so uh that is 15.6 inches uh 15 inches 381 millimeters so you're going to want a piece of acrylic 381 millimeters if you're going to want to um or i'm sorry 15 inches you're going to want a 381 millimeter uh width and height here so that is super important to make sure you scale this down to what you're gonna, um, let's see here, we'll go to 351 millimeters. And, oh, I'm gonna control Z that because what I really wanted to do is I need this to be locked right here. So we're gonna click here to lock the size and that should lock the aspect ratio. So when I say 351, 351, that is a resize of where this should be. 
Now here's something about these. These SVGs get torn apart. You can see like the Paris is a separate part than the rest. So if you end up with what happened there, you're gonna have to delete the entire thing and resize it. It's just it's just the way Laserbox is. It's a very basic software. And, oh, oh man, this is just a mess here. There we go. We'll select them all. We'll uh, do it again. I'm gonna try a different one. I'll try uh, the second one. So let's see what this one is. I do wanna scale it. All right, this one's owls and they're 396 millimeters width and height. Now watch if I scale it right now and make sure this is locked. 350, um, there we go. So that scales everything down to the size I would want if I'm making a 15 inch clock. I did a 12 inch clock when I built mine. If you, what you know, let me show you again. Um, that is what the images would look like. So here it is finished. This is actually only a 12 inch clock that I built here. Um, one of the regrets I had is I wish I'd gone 15 inches. On the wall, it's super cool, but it's super small. But for learning, the 12 inches was really nice. And I'll show you the prices on the acrylic are much, much less expensive. All right, back to laser box. Once you have this and you've got it scaled, you're pretty much done. Uh, you're pretty much gonna send this off to the laser. That's really it, that's what I mean. There's no technical thing here. It's basically burning a file. But the laser thing, oh, oh the laser is, uh, is, is a bit of a thing here. So this is when I cut it out. This is the video and what you're seeing here is I didn't uh, have it raised up. So you, you can see I have these, these little black things. It didn't raise up well enough and then it didn't cut all the way through. Uh, if it had everything like the, the TIE Fighter would have come out all the way and things would have been a little bit cleaner. Uh, so this is me trying to punch the acrylic through, which worked out well, but a lot of these have really small details and it breaks the clock. So number one tip on the lasering part of this is raise the item up a bit and go an extra pass to make sure that you get all the way through. You can watch the laser underneath with the laser uh, goggles and you can make sure you've got everything pushed through. The other thing is you're gonna wanna have, you can see I'm using a very small screwdriver. You're gonna want something small and pointy to actually punch through the details. There's tons of little details with a lot of these um, things and you're gonna need to push them out. Another tip on here is the center hole that is uh, where the clock mechanism goes. The, the templates that they give you are not center holes that are gonna be useful to you. It will show you where the center is, but you're gonna to wanna to use a bigger hole to fit the clock mechanism through. So I'm gonna show you the, let's see, this should be the cut. Uh, this is sped up. This actually took me an hour. So some other stuff about this is it took an hour, but also it smells atrocious. Acrylic, even though it's not as bad as PVC, it's still very noxious and it's not pleasant. So we cut this in a garage and we had the garage door open. Make sure you have some kind of ventilation or that you're working in a hooded thing, which you really should be doing anytime you're working with a laser. Uh, the other thing is make sure that you're staying, uh, you know, visible on the laser that the, you know, any kind of cut that long over an hour can be very dangerous. And we also cut over uh, metal. This is a, the Deadpool one at the end. It was just another video there. Okay, so at the end, let's see here. So we, we got back to this here. Uh, this was after we had raised it up. I, I did the cuts. We got the cuts clean. And then I mounted the clock mechanism. So let's talk a bit about those clock mechanisms themselves, where I got them from, how much they cost, and so on. So this is the one I bought. I was really pleased with this. This came from a store called Michael's here in the US and it was $10, I was really excited. Except for the arms, it came with one set of arms down here and they're kind of generic, you know, they, they were okay, but I spent 10 bucks, I got one set of arms. I regret that, I would not do that again. So this is the, the another big tip here. If you go to Amazon it, or basically any kind of online thing, eBay has these as well, you get these kits, this is $14 for seven entire kits. And look at how many arms and how many, how like all the variations they have. There's so many cool variations of arms here. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna move my video over so, you can, so I can show that to you again. Like it's, it's great. 
uh, there's so many things here for different clock styles. There's a couple of like cool cra or you know pencils for school and stuff. It's awesome. Uh, I didn't know about this, so I ended up ordering this later, and I want to upgrade my clock. So going back to uh, what mine looks like here. Let's see here. So, so the the clock, you can see my arms are these silver arms. They don't really go well with it. I wanted to have like little lightsabers and that might be another project I do later, especially when I get my 3D printer is try to print little lightsabers. I've seen some people actually light up the arms. I thought that was cool too. But uh, my arms uh, definitely will be better when I can use something like uh, maybe these, these red ones here that I have. So that is, I'm going to place my, myself over there. That is my biggest tip for getting the clock parts. Uh, look for them on eBay or, or whatever, and you can get much better clock parts. Now, I do want to do a more complex clock later. This is a very simple one, uh, though it has kept good time. I, that's the thing is I didn't expect to keep good time, and it is. It's is. It's been pretty much dead on for the last, I think it's been about two months since I built it. So that's cool. But I do want to do one with like, you know, a pendulum and stuff later. Uh, the next thing, uh, acrylic sheets. So I bought acrylic on Amazon as well. I got two sheets for $13. Each one builds a 12 inch clock. Uh, I didn't center it properly. So my clock was about nine inches, but you can see that the, really the acrylic as the main thing and the clock parts, you're not looking at a really high expense going into this. It's mainly time and setup uh, and then buying the files. Now, again, I talked about going 15 inches. These were two 12 inches that for 13. I did find a 15 inch acrylic tile for 27. Bit pricier, uh, but it would be a nice, a nicer, much nicer size of clock. And the Xtool D1 has plenty of space to cut a 15 inch piece here. So that's something I would do in the future. All right, so let's see, at, at the end of the day, you know, I'm happy with my clock. I, I enjoy it. It's really cool. I show it to people. I'm like, yeah, I made this. Uh, the next one I build, I will LED light the back of. I've seen a couple of images for that. And they look super, super cool. Ads. See laser. Oh, um, so that, that's where I'm going to go with the next one is I'll probably LED light it. I'll probably add a pendulum. But I'm going to wait for moving into my house before I go to there. And... I will probably, you know, I'll follow up on, on what that looks like. I just wanted to share my experience with this because I'd seen these clocks on Etsy. I really wanted one and I had a laser and I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, figure this out. I actually bought a record. I was actually going down that path of like, okay, I'm going to laser a record before I found out about, you know, hydrochloric chloric acid. So hopefully I've saved some of you that, uh, that danger. I've seen a couple of people that, that talked about using lasers on, a, on records and, you know, in the uh, X1 groups. And we said, oh no, don't do that. So hopefully I've uh, helped some people that are in the X1 groups that thought about doing it. And if you wanted to do a, a clock like this, hopefully I've given you enough information that you are confident and know what you need. If not, please reply in the comments below. And if you have other tips, please let me know in the comments below because I do want to make more of these and um, I'm, I'm looking to understand more about it. So it was a really, really fun, quick project. It was a, you know, uh, I would say honestly total, if you have the files downloaded, it's really about maybe two hours total for the thing and the end. It's really not much. And an hour that was the cutting and, and getting the plastic out. Once you have that, then assembling the clock parts is really, really easy. So, all right, thanks for watching. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit. Uh, I've got another laser review that is waiting for me that I'm gonna be working on. Uh, this one, I'm gonna have another project. That's the thing about these laser reviews is I always do a project with them and I'm very excited about that. Also, the new home is being built and I am doing home automation planning for it. So you'll start seeing those videos uh, probably in the next month or so here as that thing gets a little bit closer. Uh, the other thing is I came back from Disney World a couple weeks ago and I got a hold of one of their, uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> so I get a hold of uh, their magic bands and I, of course, am excited about talking about what we can do with these. I'm going to see if I can reverse engineer some of the NFC stuff on here. So some cool geeky gadget videos coming there. Um, and 
Oh, and I don't want to talk about the other video yet, so I will go with that. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Farrell with Geek Toolkit. Thanks for bearing with me as I go through this house move and change over of all my equipment. And uh, I will see you soon. Have a good one.